The flow in today's WTF episode is available on the TDG Para Platform Bank. Filter the category to flow. And it's this flow here. Happy flowing! Hi everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to show you how you can populate a date and time field based on a user's time zone in Dynaris 365 and CDS. Today's agenda is an advanced level topic. I will do a quick recap of the functionality that is available today in Classic Dynamics 365 workflows, and then we're going to jump straight into Flow. There are two configuration methods that will allow you to set date and time for date and time fields in a Dynamics 365 workflow. The first one will allow you to add and subtract month, days, hours, and minutes. Because it can only do add or subtract, you cannot set a specific time using this method. The second method is using the default value date and time. Now for the time, you can set it to a particular time such as 9 a.m. However, with the date, you are fixed to that date, meaning you can't do add or subtract days based on the default date value that you selected. If you were to, to continue with this method in your workflow, the problem is someone who is based in another time zone, such as Wellington, New Zealand, will see the time value based on their time zone. So Aaron Rogers, he's based in Wellington, New Zealand, and he's seeing the time as 11 a.m. And that is because 9 a.m. in Melbourne, Australia equals 11 a.m. in Wellington, New Zealand. So why is this a problem? Well, for any user who is in the same time zone as Eliza will have their tasks created with a due date of 9 a.m. for the Melbourne, Australia time zone. For someone like Aaron, who's based in Wellington, New Zealand, his due date will be 11 a.m. because that is two hours ahead of 9 a.m. So you can't set the task due date and time based on the user's local time zone when you are configuring with classic Dynamics 365 workflows. However, the good news for you is you can do this in Flow and this is what I'm going to show you today. Let's jump straight into my Flow now. In this Flow, my trigger is when the case is created. And my next action is getting the user record based on the owner of the case. The next step that we're going to do in this flow is we will use the same action again, which is the get record. And this time, the entity that we are going to call is the user's settings. Excuse me, I do not want Salesforce in my flow. All right. So back to what I was saying, we are going to get the user's setting in Flow, and that is because this entity, it stores the personal settings of the user. And I'm going to show you this in a moment. All right, so I'm in my model-driven app, and when you click on this cog wheel, you will see something called personalization settings and in here is where you can define the time zone of you as a user. So this information is stored in the entity of user settings which is why I'm referencing it in there. And when you have a go at running your flow and in this particular action this is what it looks like, you're going to see a bunch of information that is returned. So when you dump it into something like Notepad++, that is where you can see the property of time zone. And it is a time zone code, meaning it has some integers. So how do we find out what the time zone name is for this particular time zone code? Well, in Dynamics 365 and CES, there's something of what we call a time zone entity. Uh, entity, sorry. And there are three time zone entities and the one that we want is the time zone definition entity and this stores the time zone codes and the time zone names in Dynamics 365. Once again we are going to use the get record action 
and we're going to call the time zone definition entity. Okay, when this flow runs, and again, you take a look at the time zone definition action, you're going to see a bunch of information returned. And when you have a look at this in Notepad++, it's going to be in the format of an array. And for each one, you'll see that there is a name associated to the time zone code. So in flow, what we need our next action to be is to only retrieve the time zone definition based on the user's time zone code. For the next action, we are going to use the list records to be able to achieve this. So my entity name that I'm calling is the time zone definition. And for my filter query criteria, we want to reference the time zone code of the time zone definition entity. And we want to check that it equals the same time zone code of the user. Cool. The next action that we're going to perform is what we call a compose action. And in this compose action, this is where I will set the particular date and time for the due date value of the task. So this flow will go ahead and create a task using the due date and time that I've set in this compose action. So what I will do is I'm going to add two days on top of the current time. So the function to use is add days and we're going to call the UTC now function and the next bit that we want to do is add an integer which represents the days and then the next thing that I want to do is set the format and in here is where I can set the time that I want it to equal. So this is where we can set the time of 9 a.m. And this is the expression that I'm going to use. For my next action, I'm going to use what we call the convert time zone action in flow. And in here, we are pretty much replicating the same configuration that I went through in my previous WTF episode that sends a birthday email based on the local time of the birthday recipient. So we're following the exact same steps, but this time I'm referencing my compose action. And in my source time zone, what I want it to be is the time zone from my list records action. And in my destination time zone, we want to use universal resource scheduling, and this is because Dynamics 365 stores date and time in UTC. And in the format string, this is where I enter in the format. And my very last action will be to create the task. In here is where I'm going to set the due date based on the output of my convert time zone action. Okay, I'm all set and we can go to my model driven app and create the task, sorry, create the case and see that the task has been created using the local time of 9 a.m. So I'm going to my model driven app and I'm logged in as Aaron and we're gonna go ahead and create this task now. My case has been created. 
Let's check whether that flow has succeeded. And looks like it has ran successfully. So we want to go ahead and check that the task has been created with a local time of 9 a.m. for Aaron. Ta-da! Okay, I'm going to go back to my model driven app signed in as myself and we'll create another case and then I'm going to show you what the due date and time looks like for both of the two different users who are based in different time zones. Okay, so my flow has ran successfully and we'll double check that the task has been created and we should see that it is showing a local time of 9 a.m. I'm going to switch back to Aaron now and we're going to compare the due dates for each of them. Okay, here are both of my tasks that were created from Flow. As you can see for Aaron, it is correctly showing 9 a.m., which is in his local time zone. Whereas for Eliza, because she is in the Melbourne, Australia time zone, Erin was going to see her due date as 11 a.m. And that is because her task was created at 9 a.m. for her in her time zone. If we were to switch to my model driven app and we have a look at those tasks as well, we can see that it is created with a due date of 9 a.m. for my task. And for Aaron, I'm going to see it at 7 a.m. because 7 a.m. is two hours behind, which is the Wellington, New Zealand time zone. And that's it for today's WTF episode. I hope this was enlightening for me. It was very cool to be able to set the due date and time of a task and potentially any other activity based on the user's local time zone because previously, I wasn't able to do this in classic Dynamics 365 workflows, but with the pair of flow, I can do it today. If you liked this video, please make sure you leave a comment or give me a like on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm also on Twitter, so go ahead and follow me. I also have my own blog, so make sure you go ahead and check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Turn up, let's go, let's go.